The French actor Jean-Paul Belmondo had his breakout role in Jean-Luc Godard's Breathless in 1960. He would star for Godard two more times, which unofficially made him the leading man of the new wave, though he would prove himself in all kinds of roles and genres in a long and successful career. But what he loved the most was making action movies. His public loved it too. Belmondo's four-film partnership with director Philippe de Broca was especially exhilarating for this energetic actor. They first worked together on Cartouche, a costume adventure flick that gave Belmondo plenty of opportunities to show off his athleticism, and from the joy on his face you can tell how much he loved it. His leading lady was Claudia Cardinale, whose combination of allure and guts would set the template for his future co-stars in de Broca Productions. A couple of years later, Belmondo and de Broca would make their most popular film, That Man from Rio. This time around, the action was non-stop. The stunts were also more heart-racing, and de Broca made sure to film them so the audiences could see that Belmondo was doing them himself. This was an ideal production for Belmondo, combining his passion for action with the globe-trotting excitement of the Tintin comics he loved reading, though it also included the exoticism of those publications. Belmondo's leading lady was François Doliac, most famous for appearing alongside her sister Catherine Deneuve in The Young Girls of Roquefort. Sadly, this talented actress would die in 1967 in a car accident. Doliac was the perfect match for Belmondo. She was just as game as him when it came to action and adventure, and maybe even a little more freewheeling. I've read several reviews of the film that say Steven Spielberg is a fan of that man from Rio that it was influenced for Indiana Jones in Raiders of the Lost Ark. When you compare the two, that seems highly likely. De Broca and Belmondo collaborated again on the less successful but still entertaining Up to His Ears, which was based on a Jules Verne story. The action here was more slapstick-influenced and goofy. Ursula Andress looks like she's having a blast as a female lead and a rare chance for her to combine comedy with action. It wasn't until 1973 that de Broca and Belmondo would collaborate again on Les Magnifiques, but they still had a knack for comic action. Jacqueline Bissette was another great comedic and romantic match for Belmondo. This time the action was more exaggerated because it all took place in the imagination of Belmondo's character, a novelist, living in a humble flat and nursing a crush on Bissette, a student who lives in his building. These films continue to play well today, partly because of their light-hearted, fast-paced thrills, but also because Belmondo is authentic and joyful, is a comic man of action. <laughs> Bah, tiens, Rio. Rio? Oh, 